what a weekend for us to come back to this podcast, man. Uh, there's, there's worse weeks. <laughs> there's definitely worse weeks you can come back. I mean, we spend six months off the podcast, we come back, and the Premier League once again doesn't disappoint us, does it? How much has actually changed in those six months, though? Uh, well, about half the league have got rid of their managers. We've ha- obviously had three promotions and relegations since last season. Arsenal are top and of the uh, league now. Oh, and uh, Link Harland now plays for Manchester City and is going to break every record possible. Um, um, well, I had a better last night, I was going to say, that's the better still shit for anyone still worrying <laughs> about that. <laughs> Well, that's not anything different, though, is it? Right, listen, still... listen. I'm, leave that to me. I'm the one that shames my club in this podcast. Yes, although I will quite happily join in if I want to. Of course, you will. That's the best thing about this podcast: just ripping into our football clubs. It's the only reason exactly. Oh, exactly. <laughs> uh, I mean. But anyway, yeah. Send out the press release. Inform the regular one listener. <laughs> We've decided to return. <laughs> he can hand us back to his podcast library. The prodigal sons have returned from their long sabbatical. Uh, just uh, anyone who saw that Twitter post, that's all on Mr. Walsh over here. That's all him. And he, the fact that he didn't even retire at Communicado Official was a massive, like, he <laughs> missed turning. Miss. Well, I wanted to try and get it as best as, like, the Michael Jordan post as possible. That's why. He came back for the balls. <laughs> I literally, as soon as you said um, the other day that you wanted to bring this back, I was like, right, I know what I'm doing for. A, it's weird. Like... I also had the same idea. <laughs> <laughs> Shows great minds think alike. And re- speaking of returns, they're almost a bit of a starting theme to this podcast as well. Firstly, the yellow ball is back. I had to get that one in. Love a yellow ball. Oh, yeah. Obviously, it feels a bit earlier than usual because of the World Cup. Now, you know the rule. If it gets dark by half four, the yellow ball's got to come out. Yeah, it's. I think it's It's always the same. It's the weekend the clocks go back, the yellow ball comes out, which obviously happened this past weekend for I'm us. I'm going back, lads. Get the yellow ball out. Mm. It does look a beauty, though. I do like but, it. Uh, you can never go wrong with a yellow ball. Yeah. The normal uh, summer slash spring ball, mm, not that much of a fan of. Winter balls, beautiful this season. Mm. Orange balls, not so much. No. Orange balls just feel like they belong on FIFA. Yeah, and the French League. Yes. Mm. But to to the main, should we get to the main return of the week? Because it was Graham Potter returning to Brighton, and it was not a good one for him. He beaten 4-1 by his old team. And by two of his Players scoring in the wrong fucking net, yeah. boy. <laughs> I mean, very unfortunate own goals, both of them, admittedly. I mean, the positioning of defenders, both of them could have been better, I think. Yeah, maybe. I'm no defensive expert, but I thought it was slightly unfortunate. The only thing I will criticise is some of the defending in the first 10 minutes because Leandro Trossard, for his first goal, just dancing for everyone like that. Bro, he looked too good for that first goal. Like, what? Like, he's having a great season at Brighton, but that was just absolutely spectacular for Trossard. And, yeah, he just went past uh, Chelsea's defenders like they weren't there and then made Kepa look silly, which is you hard get, to do. Was you gonna, was you going to say, that's not very hard to do, but actually Kepa's really good now. That's what's happened in the last six months. Kepa's also mm. now decent. <laughs> Until this game when he got substituted off at half time. <laughs> yeah, he was doing that whole League Cup thing again. He was like, I'm injured, but no, I'm fine. <laughs> mm. uh, but does he think this is Monty Python? It's all right, boss. It's just scratch. Just scratch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, now, first episode back and you get a Monty Python reference in. I do like it. That's all where that came from. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd say. For the other two goals, the two own goals from Chelsea in the first half, in an attacking sense, that is where the ball needs to be put into the box, around that penalty spot, six-yard box, because the keeper can't come for it because he's in no, then in no man's land. And if the defenders aren't communicating with each other, put that on a penalty spot, nine times out of ten, 
that's where your strikers or your wingers or anyone else in the box should be attacking and you'll score I'd say quite a lot of the time because it just puts that panic station in for the keepers and defenders as well and the amount of times you don't see goals scored from there is quite worrying they try and do these complicated things put the ball in there bang you'll score nine times out of ten yeah and they could have like had an early goal as it was was it Thiago Silva blocked two of them off the line yeah very early mm. on yeah yeah and he was probably at fault for the first one as well yeah it was a mixed game for him because at times like you said he looked really good blocking them two shots off the line and he looks like wow this is prime Thiago Silva we still got here and then there was other times you're like oh no he's looking a bit old and worse for wear here yeah, but I feel like that just happens with most defenders at this point. Mm. I mean, let's be honest, he's, what, 37, 38 now? 38, I think. Uh, yeah, 38, just turned 38 in September, so <sighs> he's had a great career. And he's done really well since coming to England. Like, he's fitted into Chelsea like a glove. Yeah, he's perfect, though. You put him in a three-man three defence, I meant. So, uh, yeah, solid. And good mm. For someone like Trevor Chalabar, who wants to learn, and Thiago Silva is probably the best person for that. Yeah, 100% agree with you there. Um, more on the game, though. I think it's quite strange, Chelsea's like recent games, because they obviously lost to Brighton this weekend, then they've drawn two games before that with Man United and Brentford, and then they obviously beat. Uh, uh, Aston Villa and Wolves prior to that so it just seemed to be on a bit of a weird period of Graham Potter still trying to figure out his team in a sense I could understand that yeah like they've I, I take the Villa game for example from what I mainly saw of Chelsea they were not great in that they were gifted their goals against mm-hmm. us pretty much yeah but yeah winning games which is all you can ask for at Chelsea Mm. I mean, seventh in the table, uh, sixth in the table. Sorry, now after twelve games, I think though I can't really look too much into this because I think this is probably the most open season we've had and wild season we've had in a while. In the is, it really? yeah. like, is it really? Is it really? It was just this whole period before the World Cup, just a complete madness. Like no one's taking it too seriously because they know, well, we're going to have six weeks off coming. Mm. So. Doesn't matter what happens. That, yeah, I think that's why it's so weird because the teams have had a shortened like period off from them than what they would usually do because of this World Cup and coming back and the season starting earlier. But then we've got to I'd say Oct- late September, early October, and you can't predict any result now. No, I feel no. Weirdly, you can't. Did you only have to look at the bottom half of the Premier League table to? Just know that because, <laughs> mm, like a couple of wins, and you can be right up on the cusp of going into the top half or in the top half itself. And then it's it's bizarre, but I'm liking it. Yeah, <laughs> it makes, that's why it makes the Premier League great, as is the same. Mm. Mm. Roberto deserves his first win as manager yeah. as well. Decent. They've looked all right in the games that I've seen. Yeah, it was like his third game in charge now. I would say it was more than that. Really? I can't remember when he got appointed. It was either the fourth or the fifth. I can't remember. Liverpool was the first game, from what I remember. That was his sixth game then? See. <laughs> Who's keeping yeah, going? Obviously not us two, but um, eighth in the season, eighth in the table this season, sorry. Um, looking all right, I think. Yeah, again. They started well, like, Potter did what he had to do with Brighton and he was overachieving. Mm. Roberto De Zerbe is not going to drop with this lot. No, he's got to still look as a manager. Mm. Yeah. It's not like they've lost anyone big to injuries. Obviously, uh, Enoch Moep, who had to retire, uh, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I think the rest of the team really well gelled and I think they could be a team. I don't think they'll be pushing on for them uh, Europa League conference places come what may, but I think they'll be a team right about where they are now, 8th to 14th, I think is where I'd expect to see Brighton come 
the end of this season. Yeah, they'll be. I think anything like top half is where they will want to be. Mm-hmm. But anything higher, they've overachieved massively, and it's pretty amazing for them. Yeah, definitely. Um, Chelsea, though, I think end of the season, you've got to be saying top four with the money they've spent. Yes, I know they changed manager, but I think top four has to be their main priority. Um, yeah, definitely. They'll be they'll be hoping that it doesn't derail their season. That mm-hmm. result, all the the good feeling that they had from the ground part era so far. But speaking of derailing, Liverpool. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ, they are looking really bad compared to last season. Beaten in Anfield for the first time since March 2021. Mm, Virgil van Dijk's first defeat at Anfield. Yeah, that's a baffling one. (laughs) Surely he's been involved in one defeat. I think he may have been injured, though. (laughs) Must have been. There's a lot to unpick with this game. There's a lot to unpick with Liverpool at the minute, though. I don't know where to start. <laughs> where do you go with it, this? If, to, to me, personally, it, it, I don't know whether this team has like run the end of its course. Like They're still a good team, but I don't see them challenging for the title. Like There's too many problems. Like I think if they lose Salah for a period of time, like a long period of time after this World Cup, I think I'd be quite worried. I don't even think it's Salah. Like, no, not just him. We're talking, about Salah, still we're talking about Salah being an unbelievable player right now. He's definitely not been that. Mm, I think it's unbelievable how much he seems to have dropped off. It's how much he goes missing. Like he's stuck yeah. out wide, not doing anything, pretty much. Mm. Was, we saw in this game, the one time we got in the box, he scored. Yeah. And obviously, Sadio Mane leaving in the summer has proven really key uh, loss for Liverpool. Which it shouldn't. But realistically, for a top team, all right, you lose a player, you replace them. Which they have yeah. replaced him, really, in the long term, signing Luis Diaz. Yeah. He's, he wasn't involved in this one, of course. And then they go and sign Darwin Nunes, who, I don't know, like, could, this needs to stop, really. Because he becomes the scapegoat, doesn't he? For Liverpool's yeah. downfall when he isn't. It's actually their defence. Yeah, because let's be honest, it's his first season in the country. He's 23 years old. He didn't put place the 60 million to 80 million euro price tag on himself. He has nothing to do with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. You have to let a player adapt to the league. And players who have been in this league for a long time is that defence. Trent, Van Dijk, Joe Gomez... Andy Robertson. Like, they've all been in this Liverpool team for years now. You can't be uh, scapegoating Darwin Nunez a lot, although he did miss that fucking city. Okay. Hey, there you go. You're part of the problem. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not mainly blaming him, but he did miss that really good chance where I'm like, how on earth did you miss? Yeah, there was like, the any player should, yeah, I any I, player should be scoring that. I have to admit, I did laugh at a tweet. I saw someone had put... Uh, if it, Liverpool have spent seventy five million on an angry team over. <laughs> oh gosh, that was brilliant. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, but let's look at Liverpool's defensive problems then, because we've been saying this in conversation for so, so long about Trent Alexander Arnold. It's baffling to me why he still plays right back. Yeah, but at this point, like their options ahead of the field are just better. And we've already tried the centre midfield experiment with England. It failed. Yeah. I Don't get me wrong, he's a good player in the attacking sense. But defensively, he's just woeful at this meeting in time. Like every week he seems to be getting exposed, either ball watching or not marking his man or not defending properly. He just... He can't seem to do the basics of defending properly. Now, maybe that's because he wasn't a natural defender coming through the academy because he was a midfielder. Like either, I can't think it was he in central mid or as a winger. I, I don't was, remember this at all. I'm, I'm sure he was like a winger or and has played in the middle before uh, in the early years of his uh, career coming up through the Liverpool academy. But then 
he I think he got converted to a right back and then obviously he came in uh, to Liverpool 2016 17 now I feel like he's been around for so long yeah he has because he came in like really young yeah but in recent times if you want to attack Liverpool you just attack them down that right hand side your left wing yeah like I hate this idea and this is I think with the big clubs that you they have to you have to sit back against them, let them do their thing. No, stop it. Take the Attacker. game to them. Yeah, and it's been shown this season attacking Liverpool on the uh, right hand side is working for them yeah. for teams because obviously where see, does uh... yeah what I say is I don't mean not fall on ninety minutes attack them unless you yeah like somehow managing what Man a Man City or Liverpool is able to do. Mm. But, you know, it, the, the chance is there. Don't cower yeah. to them. Yeah, exactly. And where did Somerville's co- goal come from? That right-hand side of Liverpool's defence? Like that 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 whole goal was just... Van Dijk was just not aware of what was coming. <laughs> no. I, he just didn't have any clue whatsoever. And even him defensively, I know I've given a lot of shit to Trent in those last few minutes... But even Van Dijk, I think defending's been quite questionable. Yeah, like it's all right turning up against Haaland when everyone's expecting us to get bodied and embarrassed. Mm. But you've been bodied and embarrassed by Chris Ezio Somerville as well. Yeah. Well, it's his type of defending. Like whenever a shot's coming in, instead of being touched close to the attacker or anything like most people were taught when they played Sunday League. He just seems to want to give the defender, uh, the attacker, a bit of distance, and then does this weird thing where he puts his arms behind his back like he's been arrested or something. I think that's with most defenders now because the handball rule so ridiculous. Everyone might as well just start playing with their hands handcuffed behind them. But it it doesn't work because he's causing himself and the Liverpool team so many problems though when he does that. Yeah, I feel like they're just panicking. Maybe a little bit of that. Joe Gomez, that first goal. What? Yeah. You can't play that pass when you can't see where you're passing it to. No. And, I mean, obviously, what would have happened if Alisson didn't fall? We'll never know. But you don't play it across your own box like that. It's an absolute hospital pass, and you're asking the attackers to attack onto it and score. Yeah. I, I feel like we're not mentioning Leeds. As much, they oh, deserve yeah. absolute respect. I thought they were great, considering yeah. how they've been in the last few weeks. That was massive. Yeah. It was a massive, massive win for Jesse Marsh side because the pressure from Marsh. the fans. <laughs> I, like, mm. I really like him. Why is yeah. he so infectious? <laughs> because from the fans, it had got a little bit toxic in recent weeks with them not picking up results and that. But I, really I, I don't think... think that was aimed at him. No, I think it was just more of a team thing and everything just didn't seem to be clicking but for me if we go on the fact that they stayed up on the last day of last season Leeds are in the exact position where I'd expect them to be this season yeah I looked at the signings I thought they're interesting signings for what Jesse Marsh would want Leeds to be Mm -hmm. and maybe it'd take a bit of time to come together like they've had another decent result this season against Chelsea yeah so the ingredients are there, but obviously they're losing matches as well, which yeah. Jesse Walsh does not like doing. <laughs> <laughs> then again, I don't know any manager that likes losing games, let's be honest. Although, then again, if he's going to win games, can he not celebrate like how he did again? Because that was, I, I did. That was very part of you. Yeah, it's, it didn't feel like there was like, enough emotion in it. Like He just seemed it to be... It was weird. It's just so... <laughs> Nobody celebrates like that. <laughs> yeah, it just didn't feel natural at all. Well, have you seen, like, he got asked about it on Instagram? <laughs> no, did he? And his reply was, honestly, I have no idea. My wife has been asking me since the match, what is wrong with me? <laughs> I mean, she is right, though. That was a weird celebration, and I would be questioning it myself. Like, that's, he celebrated how kids celebrate when they score a goal on FIFA. Yeah. It's just that, yes, come on. Oh, fingers. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, Jesse, you're a grown man. There's cameras on you, you know. 
<laughs> what, what I found funny was imagine if Jurgen Klopp was actually looking at him at the time and not turning around. <laughs> oh, he would have went ballistic. Oh, <laughs> he's lucky Jurgen Klopp was walking away. <laughs> uh, you know, I, this is going to be bold and big out there statement, and you might shoot me down because it might sound stupid. But it wouldn't surprise me if Klopp leaves this summer. I don't know. It's a weird thing to think right now, but I don't think it's going to be like how it was at Dortmund where they just go, yeah, we're, we're done. I feel like they'd give it another season because Jurgen Klopp is out and that. I don't think it's like results-based thing, but I think what this year eight now? It's been there since 2015? Seven. That's no, the seven. Seven. It's the seven-year curse. In, yeah. in yeah, air quotes. <laughs> yeah. I, I just think maybe this is... Something just feels like this could be his last time. That's me personally thinking anyway. Are you thinking that as a Manchester United fan? Though? You're begging for this to happen. Oh, yeah. And I'm enjoying this downfall while it lasts and long may it continue. You're just enjoying it because Man United are actually OK again. And looking decent under Eric Ten Hag. I don't, so. I, I, we'll wax lyrical on that later. Leave it alone. <sighs> OK. Right, where are we off to then now? Uh, should we could do a top four rundown? I think that's the best place to then stick to it. Starting Arsenal smashing Nottingham Forest 5 0. Although the talking point was Bakayo Saka going off injured. Yeah, just before half hour mark, World Cup on the horizon, what, just under three weeks now, three weeks yesterday or three weeks today for the England game because we play on the Monday. Uh, it may actually be to the minute. I don't know. No, actually, England play at one o'clock in the afternoon, don't they? I think. I've been God knows, but who cares? <laughs> we'll get to that uh, in time. But, but uh, the, the word is apparently he's going to be fine. Although yeah. that was at least what's believed. Like, don't take our word for it. Yes, we haven't had a, the uh, communicado official from <laughs> Arsenal with <laughs> themselves. <laughs> what is the, the other point is going? Reese Nelson scoring twice. Where's he come from? Well, yeah, he just seems to have had a bit of a renaissance that game. I mean, like you said... Last time we saw him, he was banging it for Hoffenheim in the Bundesliga. Yeah, I, I genuinely, until he came on, I completely forgot he was still contracted to Arsenal. Yeah, you'd have thought he'd have left by now. But no, they've, they've stuck by him and clearly there's still a player there. And if Saka is injured, he can absolutely come in and still do a job by the looks of it. Is it that or is it just because Nottingham Forest are poor? But see, we're going to say poor, but... We're going to actually say like, lacking the quality of what is required of them in the Premier League. Yeah, I mean, you can make all the signings you want, bring in a whole new fucking football club like they did in the summer, but you've got to get them to gel together. And yes, they got the win against Liverpool the other week, uh, which no one in the world was expecting, let's be honest. But for me, they still don't have enough Premier League quality and I still think they'll be where they are come May and they'll be going back down. Playing at home for them is going to be massive. The atmosphere mm. will help them across the line, hopefully, for them. Yes. Yeah. I, nearly said Trent Bridge. I nearly said Trent Bridge, but it's the city ground they play at, isn't it? <laughs> Trent Bridge is like the cricket. <laughs> it's, it's next door. That's the thing, it's next door to each other. So it starts carrying, uh, but you wouldn't call them the same thing. I don't know, because I have respect for the football rivalries and I don't get grounds mixed up. Yeah, absolutely. Moving on. Manchester City, 1-0 winners against Leicester. Kevin De Bruyne doing something pretty good again. Scoring the free kick, of course. But the real talk point, no Erling Haaland on Saturday. Fantasy players cried out everywhere in agony. <laughs> Including us two who both had him in his team. Yeah, but, well, it, who doesn't have him in, his, in the team at this point? Well, yeah, you'd be stupid not to, unless you right? I swear it's like seventy-five percent having him. I wouldn't be surprised. I genuinely wouldn't be surprised because he is just a goal machine so far this season. He's breaking every records every game he plays. It seems, and it's just absolutely crazy to see. Yeah, it's amazing. But the real question here is, who did you have as vice captain? <laughs> Gabriel Jesus. Oh, so that mm. actually. Well, that worked out very well for you then. Yeah. Mm. I had Harry Kane. Yeah. How did that work out for you? Absolute fucking shit. Disgrace. 
Yes. Um, more on the city game though, before we continue with the rest of the top four. Yeah, carry on. It, it, they seemed a bit missing. Whether it was the fact that Holland wasn't there, they just didn't seem the full city but, that we've seen this season. But trust me, if they didn't win this game, I was absolutely prepared to come out with the statement: "Our oh, Manchester City are one man team." Yes. Like they've drawn twice in the Champions League without him. Mm-hmm. And they, like, it was like watching the Man City of what we were used to before this season. Endless passes sideways, trying to break through teams because you've got no striker in the middle. Yeah, you've got a South American striker. A, a very good a, South American striker. Yeah. Or forward. He's not really a striker. He's a, he can play it wide. He can play in the mm. middle. But I don't think he's suited to what Man City actually need. And no, like, if, he, if he's going to play in the middle, like he's better out wide. Yeah, and... For me, you've got the Erling Haaland goals. He's going to guarantee you probably a brace every game, at least a minimum of one goal. Minimum hatchery if you're playing at the hotel. Yeah, and then you bring in Julian Alvarez, who's not playing a lot, who's still really... I know he's obviously around about the same age as Haaland, or maybe no, he's, yeah, he's a younger. bit older. He's younger. Younger than, younger than Haaland. And he's They're all younger than me. I'm 26 years old. It's depressing. Yes. And it's just the fact that I think what he needs, Alvarez, is a consistent run of games to yeah, get which, under his feet. So, yeah, which is something you just don't get at Man City, mm. unless your name's Kevin De Bruyne or yes, I mean, Rodri mm. or Bernardo Silva for that matter. Yeah, uh, great free kick from Haaland. Um, Haaland, De Bruyne. <laughs> sorry, I mean Haaland's good, but he can't score a free kick when he's not playing. Yeah, fucking great player, my ass. Can't even score free kicks. <laughs> um, there's a lot of hype around it. I initially was like, mm, is it that good? Because he hit the post and then goes in. But upon reflection, great free kick and what a player KDB is. Man. Like, just... You were trying to give it when it happens. Like, no, they weren't that good. He hit the post. That's the best part of free kicks if they hit the woodwork. Nah, I would have preferred it just to go on top schnitz or... And he didn't hit anything. Sorry, is this a new one you're trying to bring in? Top schnitzel? It's a phrase that's been around for years. It's top bins. It's top bins is there. Don't you try and start bringing in new vocabulary. Top bins, top schnitzel, same thing. It, only in your head. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> knows about that one. Uncultured swines. Hey, listen, don't steal my catchphrase. Right, here we go. Should we talk Tottenham? Coming from behind yeah. 2 0 to beat Bournemouth. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> mm, um, didn't look at it in the first half, did they? No. Nah. And who knew? You actually let these players play with a bit of freedom, let them attack. Actually, they're really good. Mm. Dare I say, Conte is stifling them slightly? A, a bit. Don't take my word for it. That was just me putting a question out there i don't fully believe that i feel i probably believe defensively they're better with him in. yeah i mean i think today marks a year since he's been in the job or it's been that long it? yeah it, like it's uh this next like seven days or so marks a year that he's been in the job there has been times where you're like mm, question are they looking better than what they would have done under nuno and previous managers but like you say defensively they look more solid and I think they just need to find that one or two clicks to get going again yeah Bournemouth fell to the 2-0 curse as I call it it's the worst score on in football yep also is that the first defeat under Gary O'Neill now no they lost to Southampton oh yes they did I believe that's back-to-back defeats for them now after they were yeah. on a bit of a good run yes what other thing for this game? Hadges in the ball boy incident. <laughs> oh, I did. Thank God, beautiful. <laughs> yes. Sure, we got ejected sure. there. Yes. <laughs> uh, because of that, I give- lost. <laughs> yeah. It was giving me flashbacks to that Eden Hazard Chelsea Swansea game all those years back. Yeah. Did I, I, I thought of that so it goes out because the. Do you remember the Cristiano Ronaldo switch advert? Yes. I can't remember, was it for Nike or whatever? Yeah, it was for but the new it's Nike. It's an iconic advert. It was at the time. 
absolutely iconic advert. And <laughs> someone had put in the comments, it just it tickled me nicely. Is that what happened with Eden Hazard when he kicked that Swansea ball? Or did he just lose his talent from there? It's <laughs> yeah. a bit harsh. I think it has to continue to have a good season. Post leaving Chelsea, he has and post. So. I suppose we came out about that Swansea ball boy as well. He's got, he's doing so that he's done a lot of money off it. Yeah, I think I remember seeing something similar to that. Um, yeah, who knows? Who yes, anyway, back to the weekend's action. Yeah, uh, Newcastle beat Aston Villa 4 0. Nobody wants to hear me talk about that, so let's move on. Um, no, it should No, it should Because um, Miguel Almiron, Jesus Christ, has he made Jack Grealish eat his words this season? Uh, like Jack Grealish, for all the good player he is, and probably still a very nice guy from all the stories uh, I've heard. My God, could he stop doing some stupid things now and again? Hmm. Like. Why? Get, granted, yeah. he was pissed. <laughs> you can all see he was off his head, which is normal for Jack Grealish whenever something nice happens. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like this man continues to have his words just thrown back in his face. Yeah. Uh, but Newcastle, top four side this season. Who on earth would have thought that? They're three years ahead of schedule. Yeah, let's slow down. You've got time. Oh, this is depressing. They're getting there without the money. Yeah. They're doing right. it the way they're supposed to be doing it, through good coaching, great recruitment, and just good management from the top. Yeah. But uh, what a, I feel like it's now looking as a bit of an underrated signing in terms of the rest of the Premier League. But for Newcastle, it's a highly rated signing from what world-class player he's been for them. Bruno Gimeres. Yeah, he's quality. Oh, my God. God, could you imagine if, uh, no disrespect to Newcastle fans, but at the time they weren't a top four side. Don't worry, I'll, I'll get to that. But uh, imagine a top four side bought him. Like, he would be deadly. He would be lighting it up. The, I don't know where you'd put him at now, thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, which team would he fit if you were to put him in a top six team? I'd say... Yeah, maybe he does a job at Arsenal, actually. Yeah, I think he, him and Jesus having that Brazilian link. Like Jacques is like coming towards his peak. If you sign Bruno Gibberes to be his long term replacement, they're pretty similar players, actually. Yeah. Although uh, Jacques is having a bit of a renaissance season. Exactly. Jacques is going to be playing until he's 40, so. Yes. Um, so. Villafront. Uh, oh, shut up. Move on. New, man- new manager coming in tomorrow? That, that, that I'll happily talk about. Unai Emery is a top class manager. And given the names of, that have come into Aston Villa Football Club in the last decade, how can I be, not be excited? Uh, because you watched that performance on the weekend? No, no, shut up. That wasn't Unai Emery's team, though. Was it not? Was it uh, BTEC? It'll, you're in a it'll be his players. That, shut up. <laughs> Big tech unit, so that's all about. He does. Different leagues. Obviously. Uh, look, look, nice of Newcastle to ruin the feel good factor that's come at the club. It was nice to, nice they lasted one week at least. Yeah, back to reality. <laughs> Just that, it's that they used to be prepared that was under the, the Villa badge. That's what it actually should be. Back to reality. Mm. <laughs> The player's entrance music should be back to life. <laughs> uh, uh, a bit of a worry, though, for Martinez. So far, given the... the... Yeah, maybe. Like, I'd won him at the World Cup. He deserves it. And, yeah, why did they take him off straight away? It was down long enough for, for us all to realise something's not right here. Hmm. They seem to, well, from what I've seen uh, coming out after the, I've forgotten, it. what's his name? Aaron Danks? Banks? Aaron Danks. Yeah, fraud. <laughs> yeah, he, he seemed to come out and say it was like a, great. yes, uh, he seemed to say it was like a onset, like a late onset head injury, so that's why they took him off yeah, when they can't, did. You can't, like, 50-50 concussion. No, as us two know good, him what's off. been happening. Yeah, as us two know as NFL fans, we know what happened with Tua to cover lower. You've just got to get him out. 
you've got to get them out as soon as possible and make sure it doesn't happen again. And it wasn't to that extent as the, the Miami Dolphins quarterback, but it still didn't look great. He was down for a while and then he was sold, but not clearly. They're all there. Mm. And it was definitely one that you're going to hope uh, he's okay with and is back for the uh, near future. Yeah. But uh, as much as I don't want, so should we still <laughs> talk about, about Villa? Because Newcastle are absolutely the blueprint of what needs to now start happening with Aston Villa. Yeah. We keep being told that we're ambitious, supposedly. So follow the Newcastle blueprint of the coaching. Hopefully Unai Emery will be able to install his vision on these players. They better bloody listen. Mm. Recruitment needs to be better because it's not been too ideal. Like this this summer, sort of, they had slightly down tools, like Kamara and Carlos were the only really good ones, although Dendonk has looked okay in the two appearances that we've never seen of him. Yeah. But other than that, yeah, they need more, clearly. Bring more bite. And was it a good decision to give Douglas and Louise a new contract? Yes, it was. Shut up. He's the best midfielder we've got. All I'm saying, maybe his dreams of Arsenal have faded away for a year at least. Look, look the missus was not having any of it. All right. <laughs> so, just, <laughs> it was never going I mean, to happen. Is she good enough for Villa? <laughs> no, don't shut up. How dare you? Uh, but yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting transition under Emery. Unfortunately for him, he's only got two games to get it sorted, or what we can have a quick glimpse before the World Cup. Have you seen the first five games? They're not, they're not nice. Like we could be in the bomb three, genuinely, in like his first few games, which maybe, yeah, I have to accept that that's going to happen. Alarm bells may be ringing come December, and I don't mean like... for Christmas Day. To think would. Oh, did you, did you, I was, you're staring at me, you didn't hit, get that last point then. No, because you kind of did freeze. Oh, oh well, then, uh, yeah, I, I can't even remember what I said there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you lost my point. Uh, I guess I have to claim I'm more jealous of Newcastle a bit, yeah. Yeah. Is it still funny, though, seeing them hold a grudge for about four words that were written on a bed sheet back in 2008? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Yes, it like, is come on, guys, just get over it. <laughs> mm. like we're 12 or so years down the line now. Mm. No more than 12 mm. years down the line, Jesus Christ. Yeah, you Time's have bigger fine. things to worry about. <laughs> mm. Granted, it's, it's, not nice. the, it's not the best, it's not like the main Newcastle fans. A lot of them are nice. Yes, I like a bit of banter. Exactly. And will times change? For my villa, I can only hope so. Yeah. Tenth time lucky. Who knows? Maybe. Dreams can come no, true. Up, <laughs> yeah, this isn't becoming a singing podcast. God's sake, honestly. <laughs> you want singing podcast? Go watch the vlogs. Yes. Can we finally talk about Man United? Oh, fine. We'll go there. We're over again. Manchester United won. West Ham nil. Move on. Fulham nil. Everton nil. <laughs> uh, right, what do you want to say? Go on. Rashford scoring his 100th goal for the club. Yeah, I nice. mean, he's having a bit of a resurgence this season, looking really well, I think. Who uh, you? You yeah. just had to play him as a striker. I did. I was also saying, go watch the, listen back to the old episodes. Mm. Because when he came through the in the academy, he never played out wide. It was literally, when he came into the first team, Louis van Gaal put him out wide. Every right. other manager decided, yeah, he needs to be playing out wide. No, he doesn't. He's a striker who makes runs in behind. Put him in the middle. Yeah, use his pace. Yeah. For fuck's sake. Who cares what Ronaldo wants? I mean, he can fuck off whenever he wants to. Yeah, because this is... The, you need to say this now, because this is all people want to talk about Manchester United. Is Ronaldo washed? Yes. Any other questions? <laughs> it's just a blank statement. Like, yeah, he's washed. That's a Manchester United fan there who adores Cristiano Ronaldo. Messi's um, my goat. Oh, always no. has been, always will be. You're not a real Man United fan. 
what? Don't get me wrong, Ronaldo was great in his first spell at United, and I think he's a legend of football. However, I, I do prefer Messi. That's my personal opinion. Um, this season, though, just hasn't gone for him. I mean, there was all the rumours circulating that he wanted a move in the summer. Nothing materialised. Then that pre-season game where he left early and it just wasn't acceptable. Then refusing to come on against Tottenham and leaving the stadium again early and Ten Hag dropping him for the Chelsea game. It's just, it's not a good look for him. Yeah. Someone that's 37, meant to be a role model to this next generation of footballers. It's not a good look for him. Yeah, it's very unprofessional. Mm. You could say. But, but is this where we go into the Messi versus Ronaldo debate then? <laughs> oh, gosh, no, we're not going to do that. Say, we're not going to do that, but I actually think I had a way to solve that. What? So, you know how on Ultimate Team you can get five game loans? Yes. So you take Cristiano Ronaldo. You give him right. a five-game loan at Aston Villa. You then take I mean, Lionel Messi that... and you give him a five-game loan at Aston Villa. Why did Aston Villa get these players then, for? Then we'll see who my goat is. <laughs> <laughs> if they can do it for Villa, then they're clearly the goat. <laughs> uh, but um, another good thing about Man United yesterday, it marked exactly 85 years to the day that the run of having at least one academy player in the starting eleven. A uh, run that's spell, spanned over 4,000 games is just absolutely incredible to see. Like You can bring in all the superstars you want, but at the same time, academy is always going to be the core and forefront of most football teams, if not any football team in the world. Yeah, obviously, I think Manchester United, that's always been the United way since Ferguson became the manager. Pre-Ferguson, but... because Matt Bosby did it with the... A lot of the Busby yeah. players, like a lot of them, like came through the academy as well. True. See, real Man United fan. He's got his history knowledge. Mm. Um, up to fifth in the league now. It's. I think it's just about getting them few like, results now. It, it is, but the, the delusions already started. You just see Sky trying to say, "Oh, Manchester United in the title race now." Gary Gary Neville's looking happy all of a sudden. Yeah, but Pep said it as well. Pep said it the weekend in his pre-match press conference at United and I think Newcastle, the other team that are going to be up there fighting for the title this season, he said. And I was like, yeah, Jesus Christ, Pep. Even, even I'm not that deluded, Pep. Like, Pep, Pep, Pep. Pep's doing my games. That's the, the Pep Guardiola way. Yeah, like, I think we can definitely make a push for the top four. Uh, I'm just talking about the confidence Gary Neville has now come out with. On Sky, like he's now confidence guy on Sky wearing a snapback. I mean, that was Lewis Sahars, let's be honest. I don't care, who is it? <laughs> just, uh, just don't your age, Gary. Uh, yeah, hello, my fellow. You <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, the other games, Brentford and Wolves finished a draw, one a piece. Fulham nice to see Diego Lundin. Costa back in the Premier League, isn't it? That was his first red card in the Premier League, you know. Was he? No, that's bullshit. Yeah. That's bollocks. Yeah. No, that, that was his was first red card in the Premier League. That was, no, that was, that was genuinely his first red card in the Premier League. Well, that's, hey, you learn something new every day, but I no, still don't believe you. Mm. Um, in terms of Brentford under Thomas Frank, I nearly called him Christian Frank, then I don't know who the <laughs> hell that is. <laughs> uh, 11th in the league, again, looking really good. They didn't have just that one season wonder in the first season. They're looking, building on it, and again they're, they're a bit mixed. A bit they, mixed. Can pull, they can pull a result out here and there, but then they can go and get beat five one and four nil. Yeah, are they the new well, leads? Th- Is that what we're saying? <laughs> Possibly, but uh, I don't. It's, I think just that's just a question. Frank can turn it around. <laughs> I do think there is worse teams in the league than Brentford this season. That will oh, go down. Should be. Yeah. Um, Wolves, though, still in the relegation zone. Again, I don't know. We called in past episodes as well. Another one. Mm-hmm. I called this downfall. I also don't understand why the hell they've just decided to leave this lad in as manager until next year. It makes no sense. Like, Who do they think is going to be available? Yeah. Like obviously, Mick Beale and 
Who's the other fellow that rejected them to stay in Spain? Uh, you're on about Gilles and Lopetti, but he's a reasons were personal. Yes. Yeah, obviously, uh, uh, his stuff were personal reasons, which you can understand for any uh, person. But it just seems a bit of a strange one to leave this man in charge for what? I mean, two more games uh, pre-World Cup and then what, about 10 or so after the World Cup when you get into the new year. And like you say, who do they think is going to be available come 2023? Who knows? Maybe they think he'll be available then. I don't know. But they've got to solve it because they're in trouble. They're the only team I can actually say right now that I'm going, yeah, you don't look like turning anything around right now. Yeah, I don't see how they can make any difference to look like a team that can put up a good chance for survival. Mm. And the other two games? Uh, Everton nil nil against Fulham. Yeah, skip. Yeah, I mean, is there anything? To if talk you about tuned like in that? at half five to watch that, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm glad I, I didn't. And Crystal Palace beat in Southampton one nil. Uh, Oldson Edward scoring the only goal for Patrick Vieira's side. They needed that really. Yeah, I think but it was a down result there, that I need. But I don't really know how they're down there. I mean, they're in 10th now after that win. Exactly. That, that's how weird the whole bottom half is. I believe it's yeah. like five <laughs> points separating Liverpool in ninth and the and like 18th. Uh, yeah, five points. Liverpool's be relegated. <laughs> no. Fucking come on, bring it on. <laughs> Got to say, that, that, that you realise that happens, they cancel the league. Nah. We enjoy it and we party like it's oh, 1999. <laughs> I've never feelings. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Should we go into the European talk? No. So yeah. I'll, what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring off some statements, a few questions in there. I'm just going to ask for your input. That's okay. okay. So, first up, is the Bundesliga, you're interesting again. Weirdly, yes. I mean, I said at the start of the season, because oh, I think Bayern Munich won their first couple of games and they were flying away with it. And but then they've had so many strange results this season. You're like, I don't understand what's going on. And then you look who's top. FC Union Berlin are top Union of the Berlin. league. The, How... the Leicester City of the Bundesliga. <laughs> what's going on? This really it's and then you look down in the relegation zone and the relegation playoffs. Bayer Leverkusen are sixteenth. Yeah, but they have just changed manager and they've got Xabi Alonso in and they've looked okay since, I believe. Yes, that was that's such a strange book. Strange appointment, but he's supposedly very highly rated. Yeah. Uh, apparently When's he going to be around really with manager job? then? Once Ancelotti retires. You think he's the next one? They go straight in. Yeah, I think His they go. His next job is either Real Madrid or maybe Liverpool get there first. Although then again, Stevie G is Stevie G is still top of the bettings <laughs> for the Liverpool job. I mean, if Aston Villa is anything to go by, then please let Steven Gerrard walk into Liverpool tomorrow if, morning. If you want to be playing with no star whatsoever and go off your name, then yeah, you can yeah. have him. Mm, but yeah, Bundesliga definitely uh, exciting and strange season, and a lot more open than I think many fans were uh, anticipating this season. Would be. Yep. Yep, definitely. And that's a good thing. We want the European League to be exciting as well. Speaking of yes. another one, how terrifying a Napoli. Oh my God, I love this Napoli team. This is gorgeous. Like, Napoli being good is great for football. Mm. I mean, Victor Osserman and uh, Kravice... Wait, I've got that. I've got this. I've got this. Kravice okay. Karaj Shkelia. Can I get a round of applause for that one? That was the... <laughs> <laughs> you do, because that was actually in a really good uh, pronunciation of the Georgian player. What a player he is. <laughs> you know, like, Napoli's stadium around, so he's thinking, thank fuck I don't have to say the surname. Mm. Also, they've got Giancomo Raspadori on uh, loan as well. And he's how... doing bits for Sassuolo as well. Yeah, like how long have I been telling, like I've been wanting a Premier League team to sign Raspadori and it's just so frustrating that a team didn't. Um, they've got Giovanni Simone as well, who's looking 
really, really that is good. Diego. Is that Diego's? No. Yeah, that's Diego's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, Haven't they got um, this, no. Courage Hours kid as well? Or is that a different team? Yes. No, I do believe it is Natalie as well. Yeah, and he, like this. Fin- he... he was riffing it up as well. Yeah, it's just so exciting to see mm. this Napoli team. Exciting to watch. Yeah, really, really entertaining to watch. And I wouldn't mind them winning uh, the Scudetto this season. Mm. Been awesome. Uh, moving on. Next, Leeds won. PSG. Yeah, they're winning it again, aren't they? Farmers League, I'm bored. We're not talking about it. <laughs> Goodbye. Bo- this is literally just Lionel Messi's playground. Yeah, I mean, everyone was calling him a fraud last season for barely scoring any goals. Don't think he's having uh, that problem this season, is he? No, he's, he looks great. Again. It's almost like it's a World Cup here. And it's mm, just... <laughs> so, let's go again. Yeah. Neymar as well. Oh. Yep. That, that pass. I'm sorry, that pass. Jesus Christ. Beautiful. Absolutely Unbelievable. beautiful. But if it went out of play, he's a fraud. Yeah. Well, I'd be doing yes. my best Paul Scholes impression if that had went out of play. <laughs> I mean, looking now, top scorers in Liege 1, Mbappe 11 goals, Neymar 10 goals, Messi 7 goals. Question, who's going to run the club when Mbappe is at the World Cup? Yeah. Lucas de Campos finally gets a sack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, another team I want to talk about or player, Jonathan David. He's having a really good season so far. Uh, third top goal scorer. Yeah. Nine ah. goals this season. I don't know. Like, I genuinely think if it's not a winter move, it's genuinely going to be a summer 2023 move for Jonathan David because he looks too good to be in this little team. The only I mean, thing some... I could think about with him is because he didn't have as good a season last year with him, no one wanted to take a chance. They thought it was maybe just a one season thing. Yeah. Well, that's um, wrong. Mm. And with a certain club in Manchester needing a striker come the summer, wouldn't mind him at Manchester United. Thank you. You're not much. signing him. I don't know who we sign. Man United transfers are, from now on, are going to be too much of a mystery to guess. Mm. Uh, speaking of mysteries, I wonder who's going to win La Liga this year because. <laughs> Uh, it's sort of interesting again, even though I don't really care for La Liga as much. Barca won in the last minute, just about, and Real Madrid were cursed yet again by Girona. Also, Luka Modric has been sent off as well. Okay, yeah, he said that with like, a surprise, but I'm pretty sure that's happened. Uh, sorry, not Luka Modric, Tony Cruz. That's why I was a bit like, hang on. <laughs> Wrong midfielder. Wrong team, wrong midfielder. But yeah, Tony Cruz getting sent off. Yeah, that's a bit more surprising, yeah. Mm. Uh, but yeah, big shock for um, Real Madrid losing to, or drawing to Girona. Christian Stewani. Middlesbrough fans may remember him from his brief spell there. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that had uh, the as well. Wouldn't, wouldn't... Yes, I want to say. Yeah, I have no idea. He definitely played his band. Actually, there was a lot of a big talking point in his band. Did you see what happened between Cadiz and Atletico Madrid? I don't think I did. You didn't? Well, perfect. So Atletico were 2 0 down, and then in the 85th minute, they got one back. 89th minute, they got the equaliser. So 2 2. And then in the 99th minute, Cadiz went and scored a winner and won 3 2. Oh, that is absolutely... Uh, oh. All that hard work to get back, only to then mess it up again. Hmm. Again, Atletico seem to be at that point now under Diego Simeone. Like, it feels like it's kind of run its course a little bit. Maybe. There's a lot of concern around Joe Felix as well. Oh, he's not playing him, and just that Joe Felix scored both of those goals as well. Hmm. Again, another one that's been... It seems pretty much every transfer window is getting touted with a move away from the club. It doesn't help when they did sign him for like 100 million. Mm. Yeah. Very so, going to be interesting to see what happens uh, between Barca and Real Madrid in terms of who wins La Liga because 
the rest of the league are quite a way away. Mm. But that's it for the European talk. Yeah, been a good weekend for the extraordinary last minute goals. Really, did you have you heard that another one happened? That well, sorry, another one happened. Charlton Ipswich in League One. Like what? Oh the my hell? god! <laughs> Absolutely mental. And that is prime example where you don't leave games early ever. Exactly, and the stands were emptied. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You stay until the ref blows his whistle. What an end to that game. Four, four, four goals of the eight were scored in stoppage time. Yeah. And- Frederick Ladapo and Sam Morsi scoring Ipswiches in the 91st and 94th minute. And then Terrell Thomas and George Job- Dobson scoring in the 96th and 99th minute for uh, Charlton is just wild. Well, and it, even funnier when you say there was only six minutes of added time as well. <laughs> because there'd been so many goals, they just had to get that in time on. <laughs> you know, that allowed Charlton to get that late one. Mm. She's obviously disappointing for Kira McKenna's Ipswich, who have looked really good under him this season. And yeah, when, well, since he's took. Probably shouldn't have got rid of him, should they? Mm. Should have made him the manager. Yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, good times for Ipswich, and what a game that was in uh, the third tier of English football. Mm, nice, but staying with the lower leagues, because I have to talk about something that we also spotted. Uh, Joey Barnes' flip chart. What even was that? <laughs> Just why? Cutting managerial <laughs> tactics there. Because they were... Joey Barnes. There was so much on there, I couldn't even digest it. Like, he took Arteta's drawing uh, from all or nothing <laughs> to a whole new level. That was so much on there, Joey. I even Mick, Arte- no, Mick Arteta himself was looking at that going, bit much, mate. <laughs> Come on, man. Know your limits, Joey. Know your limits, man. Uh, I've got to ask, that. what was your favourite line written on it? God, there's too much. I can't actually reflect or remember it all now. There's too there's, much. There's one I, I just have embedded in me, and I just love it. It's, it was at the top. But it just wrote, said, a collective bed of discipline. Yeah. Who the I mean, hell are you, comment. Jerry Barton, to be talking about discipline? Exactly. The man known for getting booked and sent off every club he was at throughout his whole career. Talking about collective discipline. Yeah. Sure, I like the, the, the side of it as well. It was just like, be brave. You're unique. Like, is he going for the Ted Lasso playbook? <laughs> is there... Believe in yourself. Believe. You can, achieve, you can achieve anything you want to. Joey, lad, we're playing a game of football. We're not solving world hunger here. <laughs> like, yeah, that Calm game, me down, mate. I think that, that picture was after the Sheffield Wednesday game. They drew one all. So it kind of worked. So, and this went viral the Friday. So they were mm-hmm. playing Derby this week. And so did it work? Uh, no, they lost 4 2. Yeah. They were, they were 4 1 down at one point. David McGoldrick scoring a hat trick for Derby. Remember him, David McGoldrick. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Football League legend. Yes. Yeah, that's all I've got on my running order. If there's anything yeah. you want to discuss. Um, no, well, end of the Champions League and Europa League and the Conference League group stages this week. Um, England squad, we don't know that's... when he's being named. Like, get on with it, Gareth, come on. I think within the next two weeks. Well, it has to be. The tournament does start in <laughs> three weeks' time. So, yeah, hopefully within the next fortnight. Just, put it, um, just, put Harry, just tell us Harry Maguire's in the squad and get it over with. Yeah, um, MLS playoff semi-finals this past weekend. LAFC that was, into the. I just spot. remember the. It's just come to me the the rumor that's done the rounds this morning, and I meant to say in the European talk. Well, we'll get onto that because the MLS talk as well. Uh, LAFC we don't, get into no the. Such fingers over less talk. I'm not doing this. <laughs> I'm not no, having this. No, no just, just for now. No, I'm just saying this rumor. Lionel Messi to into Miami. Please no. <sighs> he will be. No, send him back to Barca for God's sake. I know if there's only one thing I would like, and that is the return to Barcelona. If it's not Barcelona, he has to go back to Newell. All that, yeah. 
they're the only two options. He can't be playing for anyone else. Well, I see. Win the World Cup, retire there, and then you've got nothing else to do. You've done it. Mm-hmm. Or just stay at PSG and retire at the end of this season. Oh, God, even, I don't like you even being at PSG. It's horrible. Yeah, it, it, him and Sergio Ramos being in PSG colours together. Just, <laughs> no. It's just wrong. Like it. <laughs> it's wrong on so many levels. But oh, anyway, yeah. uh, tiny bit on the MLS. The cup finals this weekend, LAFC against the Philadelphia Union. Uh, should be a very good game. LAFC looking for their first. Is there any reason you want to talk about it? Because you like LAFC. I mean, Chiellini and Gareth Bale join there and they're in the final for the first time ever. Although Gareth Bale has barely played. Yeah, because he doesn't play the World Cup, that's why. But he's injured at the minute. When is he not injured? Yeah, I mean, I I do believe he was on the bench last night against Austin FC. Um, Other than that, yeah, it's been a really strange move for him. He just hasn't played where. Chiellini, he actually has played quite a few times and looked really good in defence there. But yes, uh, that better. is... <laughs> mm. I believe that is everything for this week. Yeah, that's all I've got. Nice to be good. back. Um, yes, six-month hiatus. We're back, we're better, and we're stronger than ever. Very on. <laughs> okay, <keep on. laughs> right, um, finish off with our usual... Make sure you're following us on Twitter, at yes. OffTCPod. Uh, we'll try, try and be a bit more active on there. Yes, uh, we'll also have uh, a lot of stuff coming up with this World Cup as well. So make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcasts from, and we'll be back next time. Yeah, see ya. See you soon. <laughs>